I'm Christopher, and this is my lovely wife, <laughs> Carolyn. You were supposed to say Carolyn. <laughs> uh, and we're teaching some classes in Modesto, and um, the first classes that we did on Saturday, which is today, um, are the first one was basically about connecting with a partner and um, finding a, a comfortable embrace, finding a simple way to walk on the floor so that both of us can feel um, that we can sort of grow our tango. We can we can be creative and what we're in, in comfortable in our embrace. That's the main thing. The first thing we talked about was making sure that the music is something that we were really paying attention to. That's the easiest way to connect with your partner in tango, where you're both listening to the same music, and that way the connection is much, much easier. We told the, the leaders that when they, when they initiate the dance, when they initiate their walking, first of all, it helps to begin walking in place so that the follower knows which, which foot you're on. It also gives a chance to find the music. And that when they walk forward, that they walk with their breastbone first, and they step on the music. Many of the leaders were, were, were dipping down a little bit and kind of probing forward with the leg and not necessarily stepping square in the music. So that was a that was a first point, that if they start clean, then the follower is going to feel like, ah, I can be in the music with him. It's also important for both leaders and followers to understand that you should be using your whole foot. That is, when Christopher is walking forward, he starts with his heel first, and then he rolls through to the ball of his foot. And I'm doing the same in reverse. I am walking to the ball of my the ball of the foot all the way through the heel. And it's much easier for me to reach the, my heel if Christopher ro is rolling through his whole foot and projecting his body forward in a more dynamic way. What we saw, what we often see, is leaders who will walk what we call sort of flat. And that is that they'll put their foot down, maybe even walk to the heel, but then they'll only arrive to the middle of their foot. It's like their, their step stops right here. And then they reach out with the, foot, the other foot and they do it again. And what we don't, we're not seeing, and what, what, we, what we're suggesting is that the back foot, if you look at the back foot, it's, it's active. Extended. It extends forward. This is the end of my step. This is where, where my, my the quality is, feels the best for her. And by the same token, I extend my foot back, my back foot, back, and then roll through the entire foot. So what this has to do with the connection is that we have three places of connection. The music, the, the physical connection between us, and the floor. And this is the point part about getting to the accessing the, the connection of the, of the floor. So we also talked about getting closer to the partners. Um, because of the levels of the class, we didn't in instantly ask that people uh, take a closer brace. But as they got more comfortable, we suggested that the leaders keep their chest up, that he keeps his chest up and forward, and he feels the ball of his, balls of his feet. And the follower can therefore feel supported as she walks backwards. She's also the metronome. She marks the beat while he's thinking about a million other things. She marks the music. And she can actually draw him up back onto the music if he starts to get off. So if I start to rush the music a little bit, I'm thinking about seven different things. I can feel Carolyn gently slowing me down. She's bringing both of us back into the root of the music. Boom. 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 And I do like it's getting a little bit gooier. All right. Um, now we went from parallel to cross system. And we talked about how in close of race, you go into cross system without much fanfare. The leader just takes a quick, quick, meaning he steps his, which leg is that? His left leg together and continues to walk. I'll do it slowly. I'm going to walk left together, left. There's no assumption of a pivot at all unless he pivots me. I don't ever think, oh, now we're in back ochos, I've got to pivot. I wait for the, I, I basically do nothing different. I just continue to walk backwards. And this is an important point, whether you're walking in parallel or cross system for the follower, I don't ever change my direction despite the fact that I know we're going around in a circle. So in the Milonga, we dance uh, counterclockwise in the, in the, around the room. And if the follower is constantly sort of leaning into that turn, it's very difficult for the leader to, to lead her in a straight line. And that's really ultimately what he's trying to do. 
So also in Bagojos, we, we again reiterated and repeated that the leaders need to walk clearly and cleanly to the heel and continue and extend off the back foot. Okay? So that she feels totally supported. She receives my step. Receives. Receives my step. There's not a whole lot of going back and forth for him. He's walking pretty straight forward. Right. What we often see is this. Even in close embraces, the leaders do a lot of side-to-side -side motion. So the follower has to do a lot of work doing these back coaches. Instead, what I do is that I go forward. So she has, I'm sharing the workload with her. Instead of her having to reach way behind like this, or ultimately pivot, she can walk backwards in cross system in a more zigzag, gentle kind of way. And I don't pivot when he doesn't pivot me so that he does, I don't block him at every step. If I pivot and he's not asking me to pivot, then it becomes problematic. I block him here. The next step, I she block pivots. Him here. I'm trying to step in that place, and she's pivoted instead, stood there herself. By the same token, if I step um, in cross system, would you leave me, please? Sure. If I step in cross system here, and I step, I turn out a little bit, then what happens is, in order to recover, I'm going to have to sickle my foot and pivot this way. So I try to step back fairly straight. We also talk about the fact that we, we can use uh, tactics to lawyer. What we did was we took the cross system and we did a rock step with it. Just as we could do a rock step in parallel system, why can't we do a rock step in cross system? In this case, I'm turning it gently. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. We can also do a quick, slow, quick, slow. We can also do a slow rock step. We can go slow, 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 quick, quick, slow. Or whatever it is, we can be creative as we as we get more comfortable with that. Um, one last thing we did say was with the leaders are stepping in cross system. When he steps to the side, sometimes it feels like duck walking. The leaders complain about feeling a little bit awkward. And what we suggest is that you bring the leg underneath the hip, bring the, the back leg underneath the body in a natural way. It doesn't have to come all the way together. It comes underneath me, and then I can walk out again. Underneath me, and now. And ultimately, that sense of having your legs underneath you um, is, is very important because we walk uh, in, in tango. We talk about the very linear quality of the walk, that you want to walk very, very straight, whether you're walking forward as a leader or as a follower or backwards. That what you want it to be straight. You don't want to feel like you're skating out. All of the, it, it feels much more meaningful to walk very much straight forward, whether you're going into a turn, for, you know, or just walking. Linear, linear, linear. Always keep your tango very linear. All right. Yeah, so that wraps up for Saturday's classes, and we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>